So let's continue talking about what else mast cells release in order to help combat an infection. We saw in the last video mast cells release histamine from their granules. Something else that's found in granules are proteases, a number of different proteases. Proteases are enzymes that uh, break down proteins. So what proteins are we want, do we want to break down here? Well, if you recall, mast cells, they're resident in, tish in tissues. You find them commonly in connective tissue. And what is connective tissue? If you remember, hopefully, connective tissue is made of cells, such as fibroblasts, and a lot of matrix. Uh, and this extracellular matrix is made of proteins, such as collagen. And so this matrix uh, holds the tissues together. And what these proteases do is they break down the proteins found in this matrix. Now, why are we breaking down our connective tissue matrix? Well, this is going to allow for movement of fluid and the immune cells to uh, help move their way through the um, connective tissue and engage the pathogen, allow the fluid to move and flush the pathogen um, through the body. Another thing you're going to find in granules is TNF-alpha, a cytokine. Now, if you recall from the innate immune system unit, TNF-alpha is made by macrophages and are released by macrophages when they recognize an infection, for example, using toll-like receptors. So uh, mast cells actually come preloaded with TNF-alpha. They have them in their granules, so they actually can release them very quickly when they detect an infection. What does TNF-alpha do? Uh, it's a cytokine that binds to receptors on the surface of endothelial cells, for example, and induces something called endothelial cell activation. It makes these cells turn on adhesion molecules, such as ICAM-1, and these molecules bind proteins on the surface of immune cells, such as neutrophils, and these cells will stop, bind, and then enter the inflamed site. So TNF-alpha can um, be released from granules to induce inflammation as well, help recruit more immune cells to the site of infection. So mast cells can degranulate, release these granules, which have histamine and TNF-alpha and proteases. Mast cells will also turn on genes and make proteins that will also induce immune responses. So there's the immediate response of degranulation happens within minutes of recognizing an infection. There's a later response, response which takes hours, which will make proteins and those proteins get released, also triggering inflammation and immune responses. What kind of proteins are, we, are mast cells making and releasing? Cytokines and chemokines. So, for example, uh, mast cells uh, are a source of IL-4. IL-4 is the cytokine that plays a big role in stimulating uh, T cells, specifically Th2 T cells and their response. And they play a big response in uh, combating parasites, parasitic infections, stimulating mast cells, stimulating um, sorry, stimulating eosinophils and basophils as well. So mast cells will release IL-4 which will help combat a parasitic infection. Mast cells will release uh, chemokines, for example, CCL3, which um, uh, will recruit monocytes and neutrophils to the site of infection. Now, I know we're fighting a parasite here, but these cells can come in and uh, phagocytose dead and dying host cells or human cells because we got a lot of damage probably going on here. Uh, so we are probably need to clean up any damaged uh, matrix, any damaged cells. So these cells will come in here. Um, what else is going to be released? Uh, there's a chemokine, which I don't think, I'm sorry, a cytokine, which we haven't covered yet, which is released by many different immune cells. It's a really important um, cytokine. It's called GMCSF. It stands for granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor. Uh, GMCSF is made and released by mast cells. It's also made and released by many other cells in response to detecting an infection. It's an important cytokine. Let's learn about where it goes and what it does. So this is a cytokine that's going to enter the bloodstream, and its target is bone marrow cells, specifically so the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. Uh, 
So GM CSF will go into the bloodstream, target the bone marrow, and tell those cells to divide and differentiate into granulocytes and monocytes. So that's where, that's us telling our bone marrow we need help. We need more immune cells. And so uh, these cells uh, in the bone marrow will divide and differentiate and produce neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, mast cells. Those are all granulocytes. Monocytes and dendritic cells are also going to be generated. And if you recall, monocytes, when they enter tissues, they differentiate into macrophages. So the uh, this cytokine is a very powerful cytokine, and it's uh, released from many different cells. Mast cells is one of them, and it will basically increase the number of immune cells produced by bone marrow. So those are three cytokines that we can cover. IL-4, CCL-3, GMCSF, released and uh, made and released by mast cells. Uh, lastly, I think lastly, uh, we're going to talk about prostaglandins and leukotrienes. These are small molecules that mast cells will synthesize. So they turn on uh, genes that have the, that are enzymes that make prostaglandins and leukotrienes, these molecules induce inflammation and pain, cause pain. So leukotrienes are small molecules that are similar in function to histamine. They're in fact 100 times more potent than histamine. So they have uh, receptors that are similarly found where you find um, histidine, I'm sorry, histamine receptors. So they're going to cause um, increased vascular permeability, they'll cause smooth muscle contraction, they'll cause mucus and fluid to be released into various tubes. Um, so leukotrienes, just like histamine, but they are made and released later, and they um, are more potent than uh, histamine. Secondly, prostaglandins. Prostaglandins uh, cause inflammation. How do they cause inflammation? Uh, they can affect blood vessels. They, they uh, cause increased vascular permeability, vasodilation, so you get the redness, you get the swelling. Um, the other thing you get uh, is uh, more immune cells coming to the site of infection. Prostaglandins are chemoattractants for basophils and eosinophils. Those are granulocytes which we can bring in and help fight the infection. Prostaglandins also induce pain. So inflammation in general induces pain because you have the swelling of the tissues, um, which triggers um, uh, pain receptors in tissues typically to fire. But also prostaglandins can actually bind uh, and trigger a signaling of sensory neurons. So we talk about um, pain due to infection, uh, pain due to the immune response. Uh, part of that is due to the production of prostaglandins. So prostaglandins um, are associated with inflammation and pain. And one reason we talk about this is because we can interfere with prostaglandin production using over-the-counter medications. So uh, prostaglandins are synthesized um, from a starter molecule called arachidonic acid. I think I got that right. And there's an enzyme called cyclooxygenase that is used to convert uh, arachidonic acid to prostaglandin. So when mast cells um, are activated, they turn on cyclooxygenase um, and they convert um, the starter molecule to prostaglandins. Mast cells are not the only cell in the body that does this. There are other cells as well, but we're just talking about mast cells right now. So uh, if you wanted to, let's say, inhibit the um, prostaglandin response, you can uh, take drugs such as aspirin or NSAIDs, which stands for non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So ibuprofen, um, acetaminophen, aspirin, all of them function by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase. If you inhibit the enzyme cyclooxygenase, your production of prostaglandins decreases. If you are producing less, uh, less prostaglandins, then you are um, having less pain and less inflammation. So these NSAIDs, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, reduce uh, inflammation and pain uh, 
by inhibiting the production of prostaglandin. Okay, so uh, we've talked a lot about mast cells and what they release. Uh, I want to go back to uh, talking about how mast cells recognize an infection. Uh, we said mast cells recognize an infection using their FC epsilon receptor, uh, which is true. Um, right there. there we go. That's the epsilon, FC epsilon R1. Yeah. Um, but there are actually other receptors on the surface of mast cells, which will also allow them to activate. Which receptors? Uh, receptors for the anaphylatoxins C3A and C5A. So if you recall, those are uh, complement proteins that are um, created uh, after the, con the creation of C3 convertidases or C5 convertidases. And so when you have complement being activated and anaphylatoxins being made, anaphylatoxins can bind receptors on the surface of mast cells and that can trigger mast cells to release either granules or produce cytokines, um, hemokines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes. Mast cells also have toll-like receptors on their surface. TLRs, innate immune receptors, they're in fact found on many cells in the body, not just immune cells. Another way for a cell to recognize an infection and release um, cytokines or trigger some other response. So uh, FC epsilon receptors, uh, one way for mast cells to recognize an infection, but not the only way for mast cells to recognize an infection. So anaphylatoxin receptors, toll-like receptors, can also trigger the activation of mast cells, which will make them produce cytokines, um, produce prostaglandins and leukotrienes, and trigger inflammation.